Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From, uh, where are we from? RNA Music. RNA we're, Music. We're twinsies today. We're twinky twinks. This is actually blue, but it it's, is. it's a little bit darker blue than your blue. A little bit. Logo t-shirts. You can get mm -hmm. one on Teespring. Mm -hmm. uh, your favorite mom and pop guitar shop and lesson studio That's and music good. educators. Yes. Deep in the heart of Texas. That's what we are. That's what we are. Today we're going to answer your questions. Yay. And uh, if you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, all that good stuff. We mm -hmm. do videos like this where it's like an FAQ thing. We also do unboxing videos. Yes. Vlog videos if you're yes. a small business owner. Demos, stuff like that. So subscribe. And right now we're going to answer your questions. What were we going to say? Yes, we are. I was like, things of this nature. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I hate that so badly. <laughs> That's funny. Inside joke. And y'all won't get it. <clears throat> First question. <laughs> Steven Sharp. Thanks, guys, for answering my question. Here's a question, because I don't hear a lot of people talk about this guitar player, but what do you think of Scott Ian of Anthrax mm -hmm. as a guitar player? Anthrax. Um, I think it's you should I not. I haven't listened to <clears throat> Anthrax since high school, and I dated a guy who liked Anthrax, and I was like, Anthrax? "Tell me less <laughs> about like, this guy that you Anthrax. dated." Anthrax, what? Yeah, because they well, go they go way back. Yeah, they're I mean they're they go they're back in there with Metallica and Megadeth. Yeah, know. they go way back then. They go they're, way back there. They're in the big four, mm -hmm. Megadeth, Anthrax, Slayer, yeah. and the big one, Metallica. The number, number one. one. You know, obviously. But yeah, I remember I'm like, Anthrax. So that sounds like a disease. Like, <laughs> it is. it's a poison. You got a disease, man. You got a disease. <laughs> but so yeah, he was all into Scott Ian, like, all into it, you know. He wanted to like dress like him and have his hair and yeah, yeah. It was hilarious. So you but eventually like, upgraded. Yeah, boyfriend. I never understood that. And that's all he would play in the car. And it's like, mm. I've ever have I ever played you Anthrax? Maybe once. I think just to say, hey, this is who they are. I don't even think that's true. <laughs> I don't think that was me. <laughs> no, I mean it was like I think. You know, and I was like, yeah, 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 I, yeah, I know who they are. Now, now that you said that, it was it was just like a reference song. Yeah. It wasn't like, here's my CD, let me put it in. Because I do not my own my cassette it. tape. I don't own a cassette tape of Anthrax. No. Um. It's like, oh yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think are. of him as a guitar player? I never paid attention. I honestly don't. I couldn't tell you. <clears throat> I, <laughs> what about his look? It's different. Kind I mean, it's very, you know, just that... Sweet goatee. Bald that, guy, grow a goatee. Right. That's what you do. He just, and you know, he has like the eyebrows and just the caveman cave, kind of look to him. He seems like a nice guy because all the interviews <laughs> I ever saw him on on MTV, he seems like he has a really great sense of humor. Yeah, he's married. Is he, he's the one who's married to Meatloaf's daughter, isn't he? I think so. Mm -hmm. Meatloaf's daughter. Meatloaf. So he seemed like he has a really great, he always seemed like he had a really great personality. Whenever they would do like yeah. interviews and stuff. He's a good interviewer. Yes, he is. He's a good interviewer. He is. He's very entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Um, but as a guitar player, I never really paid attention. Because I always listened to vocals mm -hmm. for years and years and years. Until just like, maybe in the past five years, Anthrax in the past five years has not been on my radar. Sorry, I didn't mean you. It's fine. I but, it. um, I'm a man. So it was like... I've always paid attention to his vocals, like vocals, <clears throat> like the vocals and stuff like that, but never really guitar playing. Yeah. But that's been like for a lot of people. Like I honestly never really paid attention to like Metallica's guitar playing. I always listen to his vocals and their range and like all that kind of stuff. I always listen to that to see, oh wow, I wonder, oh yeah, I guess I can hear that. I was I about to turn that. a corner here and go, so tell me about your thoughts on James Hetfield's vocals. Let's talk about something exciting. <laughs> but uh, let's not. Yeah. not. We'll revisit that later. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to kind of just parallel a Angela, really, because I was not really into Anthrax. Yeah. Like, ever. When I was that age, when I first got into um, Metallica, Megadeth, Pantera, I mean, I was into the thrashy stuff. Right. And Anthrax never really, like, 
grabbed my attention. I was like, oh man, these guys are awesome. I mean, yeah. they, they're great musicians. Yeah. Let's just say that. I, I, say I, that. I do not dislike Anthrax or hate mm -hmm. Anthrax or any of that stuff. I've seen them live, actually. Uh, and live, they that were great. They were, you know, fantastic. Um, I actually was on stage watching them play. So I was behind the amps watching Scott Ian. I could, he's the only one I could see on the side of the stage. He's over there doing his thing. I was like, that's, cool. that's pretty awesome. I'm backstage. It was Megadeth, Anthrax, Slayers, Clash of the Titans, like 20 year reunion thing. And mm -hmm. so I was sitting on the stage watching Scott Ian play, which was pretty rad. I mean, but <clears throat> I'm not a, I'm not a mega Thrax fan. I don't, I don't hate them, but I don't love them either. But I, I do say I like Scott Ian kind of as a person and mm -hmm. as a metal personality. Like she said, I've seen a lot of interviews with him. I've read a lot of Guitar World magazine articles. Yeah. Uh, oh, dang it. We should have got the new Guitar World. This would have been perfect. But they don't sell them in Canton. How is that possible? Not at Walmart anyways. Maybe at, maybe at CVS there's one. We'll have to go check. The CVS sell <clears throat> magazines? I think so. Okay. They used to. <laughs> Anyways, Scott Ian, I love reading articles and yeah. him talking about guitars and stuff. And he was a Washburn guy for a while, mm -hmm. which, you know, he had some really cool Washburns, you know. Um, it's kind of one of those things, like, I think he's great at what he does and doing the anthrax stuff. But he, he was never, like, on my wall as a poster, like, you know, one of my guitar heroes. So, respect, <laughs> respect for him and anthrax and what they do. But for me, and it was probably a, a lot of people, I would assume, <coughs> they me. were the big four. Them, you know, with Slayer and Megadeth and Metallica. Yeah. But I would say they were probably in the fourth place of popularity. I, I, I think that's somewhat accurate. Now, someone who's a mega Anthrax fan it's gonna be is really going to be insane. so mad. But, uh, you know... <clears throat> What is that? That's my phone. I'm getting a text message. I don't know if it's the voice. From yeah. who? Oh my I don't know. Gosh. Anthrax. It's on the... It should be right there on the chair. It is him. It might be Helen. It's Paul. It's Paul. No, it's Nicholas. Oh. oh. He wants to know if he can have one of the pizzas. <coughs> one. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. I had to handle the text message uh, with our children. Um... So I'm not, you know, a mega huge Anthrax fan, honestly. Yeah. But I'm a fan of him as a person. Mm -hmm. He's got a sweet goatee, which, you know, goes a long yeah. ways, I think. But, uh, yeah. Why don't you guys suggest, what is your favorite Anthrax song? Mm -hmm. List that below in the comments, because I actually need to go back and listen. I, I, yeah. I don't think I could name you. What is the one song that you <clears throat> think really highlights his guitar playing? What is ability? Anthrax's... Master of Puppets Ooh. or Hangar 18. What What is that equivalent song? There was a song Anthrax? that came out like in... They one called I'm the Man. They did this crossover with like NWA or something back in the day. And it was like, what are you guys yeah. doing? They were like one of the first, not the first, but they did this whole metal gangster rap crossover thing. But No, there was like a song that came out like the late 90s, like mid late 90s that... Yeah... I that, can't remember what it is. Because it was like on, it was like on TRL and like everybody, it was like the song. Their, it was, it was like their inter like, Sandman. Yeah, because honestly I didn't know who they were and they have, like you said, they, they've been around for a long time and even like, you know, it's like, what do you mean you don't know who Anthrax is? I have a seven <laughs> dust song. I was trying to think uh, of it in my head. Yeah, my parents. <laughs> do I you think yeah. that they're big Anthrax fans? <laughs> I, was, I was thinking in my hear, head, I was sort of hearing it. I think that's the one I'm like, no, that's no, seven dust. I don't know why I would get seven dust. Because there was one of the songs that I would, whenever it would play, I was like, oh, it's not that. It's I thought, but it was Anthrax. Because I'm, I'm rem I remember the video that went with it. Ah, uh, isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. I need to go refresh on my Anthrax. Uh, I like their drummer, Charlie Benante. Mm. He's really mm -hmm. good. Anyways, all right. Long time on Anthrax. Long time. Thanks a lot, Steven. Thanks, Steven. <laughs> yeah, everybody's an Anthrax fan hates us. Please don't, some of the please don't leave. Some of the anti-anthrax are yeah. like, and, wrap and, it up. How many times are they going to say the word anthrax? An Anti-thraxers. <laughs> we might not just say that too much. <laughs> anthrax. 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 We might get, might get pinged. <laughs> I'm enjoying uh, my EMG Pickups cup yeah. with sugar-free Sprite and Emergency. Yes. 
because we've been having, <laughs> if you can't tell in our right now, yeah. we've been having the crud. This is Saturday. We normally film on Thursday night, but we felt we like, feel like, doo -doo on a like trash. Absolute trash for the last. Hashtag do <laughs> No, no, don't not hashtag that. Hashtag hot garbage. <laughs> hot garbage is how we felt for like the last four days. Uh, weather changes. <clears throat> Anyways, next question. <laughs> Segways, so good. Oh, Adam Lamar. So Adam Lamar. Speaking of hashtags. Speaking of hashtags. Hashtag Big Bob Gibson's y'all. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Adam. Would you rather? And we're not playing the game, would you rather? It's, would you rather listen to a technically proficient player, <laughs> guitar, or other instrument, or vocal, Ooh. or one who can hold a groove and stay in the pocket? Like, mm. like, right here. No, I think like in that dime pocket. A little chain. A little dime pocket. pocket. Okay. Yeah. A smaller <laughs> pocket to say. Technically proficient player, or one who can hold a groove and stay in the pocket. Great question, Adam. Great question. What do you What do you think? Are you technical pyrotechnics or the feels? I like. Um, I think I would probably say hold the groove and stay in the pocket. I think that's my first. You yeah. know, because there's a lot of technically proficient players. Like they're really good at just what they do but they're not they don't feel it out enough and it's all about the technicality and not about the actual it's all the mechanics mm -hmm. all mechanics no soul yeah they're probably shredders they should play the blues you know? so i like the i'd like the offset <clears throat> just feeling it and pausing and going and flowing i like that more and the but that cohesive you know a band that actually you know can play together and that guitar player or that drummer that can like totally like feel out what the each other are doing <clears throat> or even the vocalists that could do that mm -hmm. you know they can slow down and pick up where like that video with um harry connick jr oh yeah, those yeah people are like clapping off beat and he changes all the white people are clapping on the wrong he beat. changes it to fit their clapping instead of you know kind of Oh, just go and keep yeah. on going and because he's technically proficient so he and he is he's he's obviously yeah. really good at what he does and so he instead of keep on going and making you know and it all sounded like dookie because you know the, the, he's doing one thing and they're doing another he completely just adapts and changes so it makes it feel that good. and he just grew, like went right in there into mm -hmm. that little dime pocket and Hit it. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that better. Because it makes it more like, wow, you're really good at feeling the temperature. It's not about you. It's about the experience. And he mm -hmm. he fed the experience. And I like that. Yeah. Good, good answer. Yeah. Good, great answer. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I would argue, Adam, that someone isn't technically proficient if they can't play in the pocket and hold a groove. That's true too. I would that would be my argument that I was thinking the exact same thing. I was way. like, I don't think you are a technically proficient player if, if you can't, can't hold the groove and play in the pocket. Right. I think there are people who are have a fairly high level of skill at some technique stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like tech technically they can you're like ninety five percent there. Like yeah. they can play some Technically, sort of crazy, difficult, mechanically difficult stuff, but it feels wrong because mm -hmm. they're not their timing. It all comes down to timing. Mm -hmm. It's their timing is not great. So I would argue that they aren't technically proficient. <laughs> right. Yeah, they've got some people fooled. They can fool some folks, but not not everybody. Um, back from break. Yes. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> No, I don't think I am. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think you can hold it. If you're technically proficient, you can hold a group. But I, I know what you're asking. Yeah. But I, I know what you're asking. And uh, I would I would go with the same thing with Angela. I would definitely go with a band that really grooves. and kind of makes you like, yeah. Mm -hmm. You start bobbing your head and you, and you can't not. It, the, the music does not have to be technically... Like um, pinpoint out there, like crazy, yeah. lots of notes and lots of crazy difficult techniques. I'd rather 
a simpler tune, but really a fat groove. So, mm -hmm. but there are people out there who do both. You mm -hmm. know, there are musicians who are technically and amazing and can, you know, yeah. hit that groove. But there are some that stay so much into the technically proficiency pocket. Yeah. That they forget that it's about the people listening to it than just let, let me show you what I can do. Yeah. You know, and I think that the, it loses its entertainment value whenever it's just like. Yeah. Technically proficient. Because even like if you watch um, like the London Symphonic Orchestra or some people who are like they're all about technical, right. ethic, you know, <clears throat> proficiency. But. Um, they have learned over the years that when it's too sterile, most people don't really, it comes off just a little bit too uh, mechanic. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of conductors and um, musicians, and as a whole, they become more entertaining. Mm -hmm. Like like even just their expressions and having like the, some, some movement and some motion where they do stuff and like stand up, sit down and do things that that give that oh look and they're still playing they still have that wow factor of look how amazing they are with their instrument but they still have that that um organic natural feel mm -hmm. to them and that's what makes people want to come back for more <clears throat> yeah great question man yeah. you guys below are you more impressed by groove or uh gymnastics <laughs> Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Musical gymnastic. Mm -hmm. Musical gymnastic or master, masterly. Mas master, I can't say it. Nastic. Gymnasticism. Yes. Athleticism. Mm -hmm. Gymnast gymnasticity. Sounds gymnasty. <laughs> gymnasty. That's gymnasty. <laughs> that gymnasty girl. That's, that's just straight up gymnasty. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for the question, Adam. Adam had a gig last night in Tyler, Texas at the Warefoot. I didn't go. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Couldn't make we it. Didn't. Next time. We weren't feeling very well. <laughs> yeah. I had a previous engagement, plus it felt like hot garbage. Hashtag, Hashtag. A hot garbage. Uh, next question. Walking Dead 1369. Mm. Hi, Ryan. Did you play with the online modding for your katana? Or do you just use the factory presets? Mm. I got one and I'm not that impressed with it, but I haven't played around with the downloadable stuff yet just been busy lately too busy sit too yeah just been too busy lately to sit down and get into the full depth of what's available i think the lack of oxygen to my brain i know because i can't breathe and <coughs> i think our voices are getting a little I think bit they're more trashy for hot garbage hot garbage <laughs> uh uh i have not messed with any of the online downloading of presets and sounds for the katana i have not done that walking dead i've read about it in the manual but i have not i have not done it i actually haven't had a whole lot of time to play with the katana um i just the other day i did and i did when i first the first day i had it and i was playing with it it took me a while to kind of find some sounds that i thought was kind of cool mm -hmm. um but yeah i have not had a chance to do any of the crazy downloading. I've heard that you can get some really ridiculous stuff mm -hmm. <clears throat> from that. So I just, like you, haven't had the time to sit and just mess with it so, so much. For me, it's basically just a great home practice amp where I can just turn it on. I've got all the delay and reverb and I got as much gain as you could want. And the clean sounds are pretty good too. And yeah. for me, it's just very small, compact at home, fiddly diddly amp. But I would like to check out the online stuff eventually. So. If you guys have any settings or comments about that below, please put that below. Or if you have any links to anywhere or your favorite presets for the katana, let us know. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Walking Dead. Next question. Actually, the next two questions. Droodle says, holy poop. Holy, 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 holy uh, whatever. Green guitar, tell us more. <laughs> and then along with that, Brian Sexuar, is that your acacia? The green one, assuming it is an acacia and not a vola. Well, they're talking about this bad boy, which was in the background of last week's video. Last week we shot the video in the lesson room, which is where this, it's like, it's like the Incredible Hulk, really. Epic, um, 
guitar, mm -hmm. which is indeed uh, an acacia. Ew. Will Smith. Mm. Uh. 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 What you think about it? Uh. Uh, handcrafted by CNC machines in Escondido, mm -hmm. California. Uh, look at that. So check a wow. <laughs> this is not my guitar. This is uh, one of our amazing, amazing, amazing customers, Art, <clears throat> who's purchased several guitars from us, of uh, various ones, you know. Mm -hmm. This is Art's custom Acacia that he ordered through RNA Music. And there is a video, you can go way back and find it, where we're talking about it, and Art is in the video, and we're mm -hmm. discussing um, this guitar. Now what happened was we got the guitar in. I think I did an unboxing video, yeah. and then Art came and picked it up like that yes, day, like <laughs> which I would have. Yeah. And then he came back like a week later, and we did a little chat video, and we talked about it. <coughs> <laughs> and then, but I never really did any other videos about it. Mm -hmm. And so I asked him a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, hey, can I borrow your your Hades and um, like have it at the shop and like do some videos? Because I want to do some more. I wanted to do some more videos about Acacia guitars, but I didn't have any. Right. On hand. And he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so graciously, Art brought it back for me to borrow. I'm borrowing it to do some videos about it, which I have not done. And I feel <laughs> terrible because I've had the guitar for several weeks now. <laughs> yes. And haven't finished the videos. But that was today's, you know, this weekend's mission was to do some video, do a little demo playthrough of this Acacia. And, um... Yeah, so there will be some video coming up about this Acacia Hades custom. It's great. It's green. It, this is Arts. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. You know, any week now there'll be some more video mm -hmm. about this Acacia. Yep. <clears throat> I will say it is a shred machine. So if you're into like fast shreddy, you know, guitars, it's it's that kind of a thing. And I'm not a super fast eighty shreddy kind of guitar player myself, but yeah. But yeah, that's, it is an acacia, so. Thanks for asking, Drittle and Brian. Next question. Mm -hmm. Terry Starks, hashtag Big Bob Gibson's <laughs> white barbecue sauce. Uh, Angela and Ryan, what is the worst gig you ever had slash did? Hashtag KTMA. Mm. Ah. Worst. The worst? Worst gig or performance or... Hmm. I don't really have a lot of worst. They're stuff. They've been high level, and like I would say, if they were worse, they weren't necessarily like. Because they're usually for me, they were like worship team stuff, uh -huh. and they were people who they just were not prepared. Um, <clears throat> that counts. I mean, I count. I count a Sunday service as a gig. It I mean, was just but, but. like. You know, changing songs at the last minute and then not having time to prepare for, you know, changing, transitioning and all that stuff. So, yeah, getting there because I, I mean, I practice, I get song lists and I practice all the time and I have my earbuds in and I listen to the music. I you rehearse. count, you know, how, when do I come in? You know, if I'm just doing the harmony, I practice all the different ways, you know, even to try to think of if they change keys, if I can figure out the harmony, if they change keys on me, all the stuff and got there to the practice and like nobody was practicing. People got there late, so we barely got any time to practice. Sound check practice before. Yes, which is service. was the only <clears throat> practice that we had. And... Um, then it start service starts and it was just like one thing after the other. They forgot the words. The guitar player forgot his part, and it wasn't because they weren't aren't you know technically proficient um, musicians. It was because they were just not cohesive in practice in their practice, and so it just kind of fell apart. And and the and the congregation knew it, and it was just real awkward. There was no hiding. Because you're just sitting there and people are kind of looking at you like, really? Really? You know? And I don't like that because I'm always prepared. So and even though I know I'm not like the best singer in the world, I'm always prepared though. <laughs> and so not being prepared and like 
you know, when people throw me on the bus, can you sing this song? Because I don't really want to sing it, you know? It's like, okay, sure. Even though I've never practiced it before. Even though you've had all week to work on it. Yes. And now you don't want to because mm -hmm. you can't hit so, it. <clears throat> um, yeah, that was probably one time, you know, back, it's been a couple of years since then, you know. But I haven't really, like that, I try not to like put that on them because it's, you know, we're not, we're not performers, we're worshipers. So it's not about really us, it's about the experience. But yeah, that was pretty bad. But if you're going to get up on stage... If you're going to, yes. If you're going to have a microphone and lights and... lead other people to sing along and inspire kind of them... You should kind of song And inspire them to sing along with you. Yes. So that was pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Yeah. <clears throat> There's a lot of things we could say about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> should I say them? I think I, I think I will. All right. So sometimes people will take that like, well, it's just a church band not like it's a real thing i'm like shouldn't it be shouldn't like if you're if you're spiritual and you're into that yeah. you know and if you're into church and this mm -hmm. is your thing and that's what you believe in shouldn't that be the highest priority like shouldn't you be more prepared for yeah, that for something like than that. you are your bar gig that you played the night before yeah like you'll spend hours and hours and hours and hours rehearsing your parts to go play in a bar somewhere with a band that you're getting paid but you're not going to put equal or greater effort effort into, into playing the music for for God for God, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> so I digress. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, that is pretty bad. Yeah, that was my worst gig because yeah. I've never had really gigs before. I've never gone outside of. Well, well me and Tim we played yeah. at that birthday party, but that was fun. It was fantastic. Had a lot of performances though, you know. Yeah, that counts. Yeah. Um. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Good answer. <laughs> um, mine, it pretty immediately, <clears throat> I thought of, there's one particular instance, which is actually, I mean, I, I get kind of like the church service thing, maybe not what you consider a traditional gig, but one of our concerts <coughs> that we put on for our students, uh, recitals. Mm -hmm. So we don't, it's not like your typical grandma's piano recital. When yeah. we do the RNA ones, and you guys have seen, you guys have seen the, <clears throat> the videos we'll put them up. We, it's almost like putting on a little mini concert <laughs> mm -hmm. for our kids to show off what they've been doing. Um, and we do those a couple of times a year um, and we perform with the kids. So it's, I mean, it's a get, you're on a stage in front of a huge audience. Right. I mean, huge, 150, 200 people, mm -hmm. which is not a bad audience. You can no. go to bars and places for less people. Especially for a community of only 3,000 people. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was one of our recitals several years ago. Um, I got really sick. Oh yeah. Like the day before the recital, and we we're preparing like for months, mm -hmm. like two, three months, four months leading up to these, getting the kids, mm -hmm. you know, to play their songs. And, and the get closer proficient. we get, the more in intense the practices. Are <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and and we were playing we were playing a Metallica song. That's what it was. We were, I think it's wherever I may roam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was wherever I may roam. Right. So we're getting ready for the re recital. It was like the next day, and the day before it, I got sick, like sick, sick. As a dog. Like. Fever, stomach bug, like Bad. throwing up. Yes, all, that's what know. stomach bug is. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> so, all kinds of stuff. And so, like 24 hours before the thing, like I was just sick and didn't sleep. Like I was literally up all night mm -hmm. being sick. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, okay, it's time for the thing. I'm like, I felt, I felt. Yeah, we feel bad now. Mm -hmm. I felt terrible. Yeah. And absolutely. it was like, we have to do this. It's like these kids, our kids have been practicing. Our students have been working on this for months now. It's like, we have to do the, we can't cancel the recital. Yeah. And so, you know, so we had to do it. I'm like, okay. So we're, <laughs> I'm up on the stage. Like, I'm like, all right, next we have little Johnny's going to come play a thing. <laughs> I mean, I was like, <laughs> pale you know mm -hmm. and sweating like i ended up taking over the microphone i'm like yeah here can you do this and so we had to get up and we played and one of the songs was for our little drummer girl brianna who's amazing and she's playing and like so i'm like i'm playing the guitar part and so but i had, I had a stool brought a stool up on stage because i'm like I, I i think i have to sit down i don't think i can make it you know so i'm, I'm sitting down mm -hmm. like halfway through the song you kind of i sit down you know i'm trying to play it so that was 
I didn't get sick on stage, yeah, thankfully, because I've heard stories about that. People playing gigs, and in the middle, they're like, oh, God. You know, they're like, run behind their amps, and mm -hmm. then they come back out, and then they're like, we're playing, you know. But I just, like, oh, it was bad. Mm -hmm. and, but we made it through. We played the song. There's a video of it. You can go find it. I think it's wherever I'm in Rome, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe I should put a link in the description. Yeah. I'll put a link. Here's us doing this song. That's where I felt like. Uh, a hot zombie. Garbage. <laughs> a hot garbage. A freshly raised zombie is what I felt like in that. <clears throat> so that was my worst live performance that I can recall. Easily the worst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. <laughs> Great memories. Thanks for the question. Good times. Good times. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Sorry, cough break. I'm going to re ask that question. <laughs> Colin James, question for next time. Have you heard Ola's solo album yet? What do you think of it? Ola, Ola, mm -hmm. Ola, uh, Master of the Universe, I think is the name of the album, which is hilarious. It's got mm -hmm. a little, well, on the CD is a little kitty cat. It's, it's, it's super cute. Mm -hmm. I have heard it, Colin, and I really like it, personally. Um, you know, I watch Ola's YouTube channel, and I like his music. When it comes to, like, heavy, like, heavy music stuff, there's a lot of times I like the music and the guitars, but I don't love, like, really... You know, crazy vocals. Right. It's kind of like Dream Theater. Can't stand the vocals, but the music's great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I, I like, you know, that's one thing. I like that because I can listen to it and the Cookie Monster vocals or the, you know, really scratchy vocals don't turn me off. So I think it's really cool. Uh, I've listened. I don't know if I've listened to every track. I've listened to most of them. And actually one of the tracks on there is Solar Part 1. He actually released it a long time ago like on iTunes or something. And I've actually already got that. I bought yeah. that a while back. And it's got piano stuff. It's very progressive-y. Mm -hmm. It's dream theater-ish in, yeah. in a lot of ways, but without the terrible vocals. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I like it a lot. I highly recommend it. Go get you a copy. I want to get a physical copy of it just to have it because I like to... People that I like, if I can, I like to support them and get the physical right album you know it's something about having the tangible like i got pat we got pat's cd mm -hmm. <clears throat> pat david from australia we got i mean we bought it online but right. we also got the physical cd which is i don't know i just like that mm -hmm. we don't do that for everybody though mm -mm. only the important people like pat uh yeah so i loved it mm -hmm. thanks colin james i can't breathe next question hank rott's guitar hashtag big bob gibson's hey guys question for next week kind of a long one i'm at a point in my guitar collection where I'm super happy with what I have. <laughs> That's not true. You always want more. Uh, although I'm thinking of saving up loads of money to do a sort of custom guitar. Mm. See? Told you. CMG and Acacia have been brands I'm thinking of, but since I saw the Explorer-shaped Acacia, mm. it might be the way to go. Mm -hmm. Have any insight on both companies? I know you guys worked with them for a while. Just want to feel like I'm spending my money well with either company. Cheers! Sorry for the long one this week. <laughs> no, it's not bad. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, those are both great choices. I'll just go ahead and say that. Either way you go, <clears throat> you'll be fine. I think. Uh, CMG is more affordable, right? I mean, I mean, you could go like just pretty crazy. They've made one guitar that was really kind of ridiculous, steampunk, mm -hmm. kind of crazy guitar. Mm -hmm. um, that one was kind of expensive, but I would say for almost any of the other custom CMGs, they're pretty good on the price. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think anybody's beating them on price for a custom or semi-custom guitar made in America. Yeah. And I don't think anybody really can. Um, but at a certain price point, I mean, it is fair to say, you know, if you take a $1,200 guitar made in America and a $3,000 guitar, made in America. There are differences, you know? So Acacia kind of falls into that higher bracket mm -hmm. price point. Like we're, we're having one built now that's uh, like around three grand. Mm -hmm. And you know, you put them side by side, you notice a difference, yeah. like as you should. Yeah. There should be a difference between a $3,000 USA guitar and a $1,200 USA guitar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's there, you know? Um, so it just kind of depends on your budget. Like if you want to just like really go all out and save up some money or sell some gear. I mean, I would, <clears throat> I would put the Acacia stuff, you know, like, like head to head with like a, the PRS stuff. Mm 
-hmm. like the, the colors and the tops and all that. It's like, and you're paying some serious money for some PRSs, you know, in that three to four grand price point. I think the Acacias are right there. Um, and I think the CMGs head to head with pretty closely priced Gibsons definitely beats the Gibsons. Because Gibson has some $900 guitars and I've had them side by side, the CMG and the, you know, Gibson. I was like, CMG's nicer than the Gibson at $799, 800 bucks. They're, they're base model versus base models. They're definitely better. So it just, it just kind of depends on what, what you, what your budget is. Right. right. And there are certain things like CMG won't do, like they're not going to change they, their neck profiles or neck profile. Mm -hmm. And they do 24 and three quarter inch scale. So they're not going to do, they're not going to do a 25, five scale length. So if that matters to you, they're not going to do that. Or you're, they're not going to redo everything to do a different neck profile. So there are certain things that CMG can't or won't, it's not optimal for them to do that. Mm -hmm. To go completely redo all of their machinery just to do one off guitar. Mm -hmm. um, where Acacia probably can do that. Mm -hmm. Or they'll probably be willing to, but it's going to cost. It's going to cost quite a bit yeah. more to do that. So I think either way you go, you'll be fine. Um, if it's about the shapes, Acacia will probably build anything you want. <laughs> With CMG, it's going to be based off their their uh, Ashley body or their Mark body. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's a few more options shape-wise with Acacia. There's less options body-wise with CMG. So I hope that answers your question. Um, just you have to define your budget first <laughs> right. and what you want. So <clears throat> explore. All right, thank you for the question. Next question, Psycho G. Hey, Ryan and Angela, how the heck are y'all? Hey. Hashtag hot garbage. That's how we're <laughs> all right now. Quick question. There was a yellow headstock behind you, Ryan, in your last video. Ooh. I could not see the body, and it made me really curious. Is it a Schecter, or did my eyes deceive me? Hashtag KTMA. P.S. Say hi to Paul, Bitter Bass Man, for me, please, and thank you. Hashtag Big Bob Gibson. All right. Mm -hmm. Everybody got the secret hashtag of the day last time. Yeah. Which you have to stay to the very end of the video mm -hmm. to get the secret hashtag of the day. You're probably talking about this one. Mm -hmm. Which you should be able to tell is a Schecter. Schecter. This is my uh, this is my Hellraiser Extreme Solo 6. You've seen it many times, I'm sure. Ooh. Ooh, look at that back, though. Hey. Nobody, nobody ever sees the back, but... I see the bag. Mm -hmm. It's a sexy bag. Yes. It really is. It's very pretty. Yeah, so that's just... <laughs> yeah, it's that one. I think this must have been the one. I'm pretty sure. So it's got the maple headstock uh, veneer that goes with the flame maple fretboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just just my shaker. That's all it is. The squeaky. There's, there's your squeaky strap locks everybody asks about. <coughs> Goodness. Mm. So there you go, yeah, it was my Schecter. It's yeah. a great guitar. I'm still looking for the black one. I found a few, like a, at, right after the last guitar I, I got, the Gibson, someone mm -hmm. sent me a link to the black Schecter that's like that that I want. I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, I just bought a Les Paul. I, I can't, yeah. Mm -mm. No. So maybe next year, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Next question, thank you, Psycho. Psycho? Psycho, it's Psycho G. Mm -hmm. Why do I keep getting confused on that? I don't know. Just Fun Guitar, thank you so much for the shout out and again for the box. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. New question, what is your thoughts on the new Evil Twin Schecters? I especially like the look of the SCH 1343 E1 SLS. Hashtag KTMA, hashtag Big Bob Gibson. Legendary status. Oh. Legendary status. Uh, the new Evil Twin Schecters. Um, you know, I like me some Schecters. So let's be clear, first of all, mm -hmm. obviously, I like me some Schecters. Um, that's not the new model that really grabs my attention, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all kind of like flat black, which is great, super metal. I was looking at the V, personally, and I do like, you know, it's interesting that on the fretboard, they have all the fret markers, instead of the little dots, they have like Roman numerals, like for three and for cool. five, seven, 
mm -hmm. 9, 12. It's, you know, the whatever the Roman mm -hmm. numerals are. So that's, I mean, that's kind of neat, but they kind of remind me of like the old sort of voodoo series, Gibson's. Um, I mean, definitely metal, like Evil Twin, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but if I were going to buy one from this year's range for myself, mm -hmm. which I'm not, but if I were, just, just wanted right. you to know, right. probably not getting another Schecter this year. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Um, that's not my favorite. I, I really like the Apocalypse series. Yeah. So for me, um, I would be I would going be going for the Apocalypse E1 mm -hmm. or the Apocalypse V. Personally, those sort of the rusty gray kind of finish. It's definitely you expect someone to play some like hard rock or metal or some voodoo blues or something. But um, I like I like the Apocalypse series better. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't get the uh, Evil Twin series. Right. Right. But when I hear that, the first thing I think of is Evil Twin from Black Label Society, Nick Cadenese. Uh, so the first thing that pops in my mind is, oh, it's Zach, uh, you know, Zach's other guitar player, Evil Twin, who had a signature washburn. That's right. That's what I was thinking. Okay, yeah. I'm not crazy. No, you're not. So okay. he was, I, I had so an wait, Evil Twin. Yeah, I had an Evil did. Twin washburn, which I had sold mm -hmm. a long time ago. And then he had a signature PRS, yeah. like uh, Nick. Nick Cadenese. Mm -hmm. um, so, from a marketing standpoint, when I hear that, the first thing I think is like, "Oh, is he playing Schecter's?" Wait, no, he's not. He's not doing anything right now because mm. he's dumb. But uh, yeah, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> we won't get into. We that. won't get into it. <laughs> We're not going to get into that story. I don't want to talk about that. But uh, yeah, so from a marketing standpoint, I kind of that's the first thing I think, and that's. It's not something I want to think about. So, <laughs> anyways, there you go. All right. But if you want one, you should get one. Mm -hmm. But I like the apocalypse. That's just... Okay. Thanks for the question, man. Mm -hmm. So much. Uh, and we will... I'm looking forward to your next video. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Final question. Kurgle Kreutzer. Hashtag Big Bob Gibson. Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Question, have you seen the new Star Wars Episode Nine trailer <coughs> and what do, did you think of it, if you have seen it? I thought, uh, and he goes on to give his thoughts. Okay, so spoilers. It's probably no spoilers, but I thought that J.J. Abrams is trying to just save his reputation by doing fan service by bringing back Palpatine. He probably has no story and is again using the beloved characters like in The Force Awakens to make a bad version of one of the original trilogies movies. P.S. Would a hashtag legendary shirt be cool addition to your clothing line? Hashtag KT Man. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Thoughts on the new Star Wars trailer, Episode 9? The Rise of Skywalker? It was ridiculous. I... I didn't care for it at all. Uh, I did like seeing Lando with Chewbacca in the Millennium Falcon. That mm -hmm. was pretty cool. Billy D all the way, man. Billy D, y'all. Billy D. In the house. Um, been a big, huge Billy D fan since back in the day. Even I think my dad even owned his record. Who doesn't? That he put out like in like 81 or something Why like that. Why wouldn't you? Um, but uh, I'm kind of done with Star Wars. I've been done with Star Wars for a long time now, kind of, more than I thought I was. Um, whenever the new trilogy came out, mm -hmm. it just really broke my heart. It really did. They had so they they had something amazing to work with, and they just killed it. it. They literally put their hands around its neck and strangled it like a barnyard chicken. And um, to hold back. I <laughs> know. So um, for them to bring back Palpatine. And bring back like old canon of what Palpatine is and what he's capable of doing is stupid. Now that they ruined like my childhood, it's too late. <laughs> so, because in all honesty, Chewbacca should be dead and <coughs> Han Solo. There should be more children of Luke and Leia uh, and Han running around. There should be like there's all there's some there was so much that they could have been they could have done. And brain with and made an amazing story. If anything, they could have brought 
brought in some of the video game characters that everybody liked, like Starkiller, and would have rocked the world of Star Wars completely. They could have just made the Force... Yeah, they could have just made the Force Unleashed video game a movie, and that would have been fantastic. And that would have been amazing. And so I'm not looking forward to them, like you said, like destroying another beloved character. Because even though Palpatine was a complete jackass, he was an amazing character. (laughs) And we've watched him, even when they resurrected 1, 2, and 3, go from Senator Palpatine up until now. And even in the Clone Wars and seeing all that stuff in the cartoon series. He's a pretty bad dude. You know? So for him to bring him back now, when they could have done that instead of Snoke. Snoke. What's that about? You know, <clears throat> Andy Circus. You wasted Andy Circus. For yeah, for Snoke. I mean, come on. You literally had <sighs> yeah. What a waste. So yeah, I'll move on. Um, I'm not looking forward to it. I probably won't go see it. Um, which is really sad for me because the only Star Wars movie that I have not seen in the theaters is Episode Four, and I wasn't born yet. We didn't see Solo in the theaters, did we? No, we did. Yeah, we did go see it. Yeah, we weren't we weren't boycotting. No, it was. I didn't see. I've seen every Star Wars movie in the theaters, except for the one that was open before I was born. Like I. Yeah. That was a child, a small child, but we went and saw them in Prior Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And, mm-hmm. like, I've been a part of this since the beginning. And now, <clears throat> the very last one, I won't go see. That's pretty sad. No, you're going to go see it. Mm. We're going. I'll bring a book. Bring it. <laughs> bring one and a flashlight. What are you doing? I'm reading the Star Wars I'm, novel over here. I'm reading what should have happened. I'm actually reading a real Star Wars story. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny you say that, Kurgle, because, okay, I watched it and I thought, of course, Paul texted me. He's like, have you seen the new Star Wars trailer? I'm like, nope. And then he sends it to me. And then I'm going to, so then I immediately go look for it. I'm like, huh. And so, yeah, I got a little emotional when I saw Billy D. It's like, hey, it's yeah. Billy D. I'm so did Nicholas. They're probably going to kill him. Mm-hmm. Like, why wouldn't they kill him? Why not? When they killed Han Solo, mm-hmm. they killed Luke Skywalker. Why would they not kill Lando? They're probably going to kill him. They brought him back just to kill him to make me cry. Um, but I did like seeing him. I'm like, yes, great. Okay, good. And you get to the end. Probably kill both Lando and Chewie together. Yeah, probably. Yeah, they're going to fly into a Death Star. You know? uh, I don't think. I don't think they. Will. I don't think they will. Uh, I think they will. I don't think. I don't know. And then at the end, you know, the whole Palpatine laugh. I'm like, okay. I kind of liked it for a minute, for a hot minute, <clears throat> and then I was like, you know what, J.J. Abrams, I had to remind myself, I hated episode eight so much that I had to kind of go back and remember, how did I feel about episode seven? And it was like, I didn't love it. I did not love seven. Like, I didn't hate it, but I definitely didn't love it. And I had to remind myself, I'm like, oh yeah, well, okay, what is, because episode seven was all about, it was this nostalgia grab. You're seeing the Millennium Falcon again, you're seeing Han and Chewie and Leia and mm-hmm. you see Luke, and it's all like, you know, all for if you're an older viewer, you're like, you're, you're, you're reliving the past, basically. Mm-hmm. So it was a total same place. cash play. Yeah, same, I mean, same story as episode four, same characters. I mean, it was a total nostalgia mm-hmm. trip, and that's why everybody went to go see it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then Ryan Johnson ruins everything with the Last Jedi. JJ's coming in. I think he's got like he's got to like set things right with the fan base because they lost a lot of money. So um, we're gonna get like <clears throat> episode 10, 11, 12. So no, what I think is gonna happen is like he's gonna what did, what did he do in the first one? Total nostalgia thing. Short on story, big on nostalgia. Mm-hmm. So I think he's going to do the exact same thing. Because now they're like, we really need to bring all the fans back. And so it's just going to be a nostalgia play. Like That's why there's going to be Lando. And that's why they're bringing back Palpatine, which doesn't make... I think it's going to be too little, too late. I'm going to go see it. I'm going to go see the it. The fact that we haven't heard from <clears throat> Palpatine 
honestly, since if you go on the timeline of everything, we haven't heard from Palpatine since six. So to have him jump in in the very last film. Well, in the what's now not the canon, the expanded universe, there was more Palpatine stuff. But that's all been erased. That all doesn't exist anymore. And so it's all, it's all, it's stupid. So for me, episode seven, eight, nine, I'm like, that's going to be something that, that's not real. That doesn't exist in my Star Wars universe. Yeah. I'm just going to delete that from existence. It's like the new Star Trek movies. Yeah. Those were actually okay. I know, but it wasn't the Star Trek universe. Was yeah, because Ahura and Spock didn't have a relationship in the Star Trek universe. Yeah, but they were like, they're kind of rebooting it. But I'm like, you know, oh, no. it was a great story. But for me, it's just it's like those what if comic books. Like, what if right. you know Hulk was this, and it's totally a like, girl. Yeah, well, originally, no, not She Hulk. Yeah, but oh like, yeah, yeah, like originally. <clears throat> well, they had this whole line of what if. You know, comics where it was just sort of what if, and it would be like a one off story that let's pretend that yeah. Wolverine doesn't have healing factor or whatever, or let's pretend that Cyclops is whatever, or let's pretend that it would be like a one issue, like short story. I'm gonna do a comic strip where what if episode seven, eight, nine didn't exist? Yeah, it was all a bad dream. Luke, was. Luke woke up, like, oh lord, it was a Nightmare. It was force a vision. Jedi test. Yeah, they're going to pull the end of Twilight on us. It's a Twilight. We're like, it's a See, Twilight. This is episode. what could happen. It's a Twilight. If episode. you turn, it's going to go all the way back to that moment in the tent where Luke is standing over Kylo Ren, and he's like, "This is what will happen." If they do that, I'm going to be so mad. Now that I say that, if they do that, I'm going to be so mad. Yeah. Because that's how powerful Luke is that he can play out the whole scenario. This I'm gonna go see it. I'm gonna go see it just so that I can complain about it later, and probably be justified. But what I'm really excited about is Avengers Endgame in a couple of weeks. Yes, I'm thank, pretty, thank goodness we have the Avengers to lean back on. Yeah, because Star Wars has been completely. Thank know. goodness there's Marvel. So, <clears throat> anyways, Star Wars not excited anymore. Hashtag. Complete complete conspiracy theory right now. What if they were like, we can't really have Star Wars making more money right now than Marvel. Avengers and Marvel. So let's sabotage let's, Star let's Wars. Sell it, but don't sell it so much where we don't get the money out of all the money we've invested for the past ten years in Marvel. So All right. <clears throat> So there you go. There's the answers. Now I'm now I'm and upset, Kurgle. Arm, my arms are crossed. Now I'm having like now I'm sweat. having <clears throat> now I'm having a bad day. Kurgle mm -hmm. <laughs> Kurtzer. It's not your fault. It's not your. It's fault. not you. It's Disney. It's Disney. Oh, I hated the Disney. Although uh, they Disney owns Marvel, so like, how can you do this thing over here so well, and this thing over here so badly? That's a lot to do with the cast too. Yeah. So bad. you have to work with. So bad. Yeah. Yeah, that was Mark Hamill. He's just, you know, whatever. Anyways, we gotta we gotta move on. Alright, so what's the secret hashtag of the day? If you made it this far Hot garbage. in our Well we already said it way earlier. Mm -hmm. oh, it's okay. supposed to be if you make it to the very end of these ultra mega long RNA FAQs, <laughs> we have a secret hashtag of the day that if you mention it. I gotta go do this on last week's though and type mm. in your advice. You achieve hashtag legendary status. What, oh, it's the last part of his question. <laughs> Would a hashtag legendary shirt be a cool addition to your clothing line? Hashtag KTMA. Yes. yes. And I tried to go have one made yesterday at our local t shirt place, but they were closed for the holiday, as mm -hmm. were we. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hashtag legendary. Yes. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, we're totally gonna do that. Because mm -hmm. we can do it locally at reasonable prices, I think. Mm hmm. And we can do it on Teespring. Hashtag legendary. Yes, we can. Should it be hashtag legendary and that's it? Or like hashtag legendary status or hashtag KTMA legendary? Or what do you hashtag think? RNA legendary. Brian and Angel legendary. Hashtag legendary RNA. Yes. Or RNA legendary. Mm -hmm. Which one RNA you legendary. You okay. Or RNA legendary. So if you make it to this point in this 
RNA music video, mm -hmm. the secret hashtag of the day is hashtag RNA, RNA legendary. legendary. Mm -hmm. Because if you made it this far and you watched this long, thank you so much. Because mm -hmm. watch time of the audience, Google tracks that. And they're like, yeah, a lot of people watch this to the end. Nice job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you achieved, in our eyes and in our hearts, you achieve hashtag legendary RNA, hashtag something or another, hashtag RNA, RNA legendary, legendary status. Yeah, Instead of I'm RNA sure. music, it's RNA legendary. Yeah. So that's you. I will go comment that on your hashtag. And then maybe next week we'll have an actual shirt of that. So mm -hmm. leave us below, though. This would be very helpful. What size t-shirts do you guys and gals wear? Because if we have some printed, I need to know what sizes. Yes. Gotta so make sure. That would be helpful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for all your questions. Uh, and if you have a question for next week, put it below. Mm -hmm. Comments are also always welcome. Always welcome. We like to read those. Thank you so much. And we will see y'all in our next video. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend the next hour, there were five, editing this here at work. Hopefully, let's get out today on Saturday. And we'll see y'all in the next video. So keep the music alive. Don't forget it. The music needs you. And you need the music. And we need to keep it alive for the next generation mm -hmm. that's going to grow up in a dark, dark world without good Star Wars movies. Except for the originals. Wow. It's kind of sad, really. It really is. I'm going to go play guitar now. <laughs> Sounds good. Bye, y'all. Bye.